I freaking love The Evil Dead. Every time I pop that sucker in, I'll more than likely end up watching Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness immediately after it. Bruce Campbell is, without a doubt, the grooviest horror movie hero and has some of the most quotable dialogue in horror movie history. Shop smart. Shop smart. Sam Raimi's direction and cinematography is crazy, crafty, and iconic, accompanied with masterful scores. Not to mention, each movie is completely different in tone from the previous, so if you can't dig one of the entries, you've got another shot with the next. And yes, there is a musical. And it's pretty freaking awesome, too. God, do I love this psychotic series. So, along with everyone else, I was intrigued and shocked by the content of the trailer for Evil Dead, the reboot, reimagining, weird, distant sequel of the franchise. And in my typical style, I saw it way after its release and hype. So, as a self-proclaimed die-hard Evil Dead fan, what did I think of it? Well, let's get into it, because I got a lot to say. This is Evil Dead 2013. Five friends venture out in the woods to an old cabin that belonged to the family of David and Mia, two in the group. They're here to help Mia finally put an end to her drug abuse, ensuring that she sticks it out by refusing to let her leave. During the night, delirious from withdrawal, Mia screams out about a smell coming from the basement. David and Eric go down to investigate, finding dead, hanging animals, a, du a double-barrel shotgun, and something bundled and tied up with barbed wire, all appearing to be a part of some sacrificial ceremony. Despite better judgment, Eric opens the bundle finding a bizarre book, and unwittingly unleashes an evil upon their little cabin in the woods by reading from the book's pages. Directed and co-written by Fede Alvarez, and produced by Sam Raimi, Rob Tappard, and Bruce Campbell, director, writer, producer, and star of the original, respectively, Evil Dead 2013 is more or less a retelling of the story in the first film, but, it, but a lot of theories popularized by a statement from Alvarez suggests that this film could actually be a distant sequel. He suggests that it could be the same cabin that was fixed up by a family after the events of Evil Dead 2. I mean, the same car, Sam Raimi's Delta 88 Olds Oldsmobile is there, all rusted and grown over. But that is where the theory falls apart for me. I mean, I could believe that a similar group of young adults would fall into a near-identical situation as Ash and his friends, maybe. But that car shouldn't be there, then. It should be in 1300 AD, or in a cave somewhere, depending on which ending of Army of Darkness you follow. I know that's a super nerdy thing to analyze, but consistency is key in sequels. Even though the Evil Dead franchise has never been known for its consistency. Nevertheless, for me, Evil 2013 is still a reboot. Well, now that I got that out of the way, the rest of the plot is pretty much teenagers constantly screwed for 90 minutes in a cabin in the woods. And in that sense, it really feels kind of like a throwback horror movie, which I can really dig. The acting in this movie is fair, but not as memorable as the cast in the original. Jane Levy leads the cast as Mia, who can, you can really sympathize with because she's a troubled person trying desperately to do the right thing, who just so happens has to deal with ancient curses and demons on top of it. Shiloh Fernandez plays David, her older brother, who's conflicted with his past, trying to help Mia and doing what's best for her. Also, he's got to deal with the demons too. Lou Taylor Pucci plays Eric, who really makes this movie feel old school. I mean, just look at the guy. He looks like a generic 70s stoner. But I digress. Jessica Lucas and Elizabeth Blackmore complete the cast, but there isn't a whole lot to say because they're given a, not given a whole lot of time to shine and really aren't that interesting. The cinematography in this movie is fantastic. Fede Alvarez may have came out of nowhere, but he knows how to shoot a movie. The POV of the entity roaming the forest is intense and a perfect homage to the original trilogy. Each shot is framed perfectly and makes you feel alone and secluded in this cursed patch of forest. And the constant rain and gnarled trees just puts you in that mood for a good horror movie. The cabin is once again a perfectly creepy setting for all kinds of scares and carnage. Roque Banos does a fantastic job with the score, giving Joseph Leduca a good run for his money. It's disturbed and haunting, just like the film it's built around. 
My favorite piece is the one that plays over the credits. Now that's all well and good, but the real star of the Evil Dead movies has always been... Ash. But the creature effects are a very close second, and Evil Dead 2013 really nails it. The demons are unique and not just carbon copies of the originals. They're real nasty looking, and the glowing yellow eyes are hauntingly unnatural. Now let's get down to the bone. Evil Dead 2013 could succeed if it was its own movie, and it is, but first and foremost, it's a reboot, so we need to gauge it on how faithful it is to its source material. Fans of the original trilogy will recognize some of the dialogue from the first film and a lot of the key plot points, which is as good as the original was relatively formula-based. People who saw the trailer know that this film is much bloodier, and holy crap does it bathe in the blood. The tree rape scene is back and more gruesome and unsettling than ever. Also, the famous hand possession from Evil Dead 2 is paid homage. But, good god, the poor girl uses an electric knife? It's not over near as quick as it was with a chainsaw, either. The scene relishes in the blood and sheer brutality of it all, and that's not even the only hand lost in this film. Something about that always makes my skin crawl. I hate lost hands. Unfortunately, though, the trailer gives a lot of the gorier bits away, and there isn't a whole lot more scare-wise that you couldn't have picked up on from the trailer. The Evil Dead had a lot of gory effects that still hold up, and so does the reboot. But Evil Dead 2013 has more in common with the torture porn subgenre, i.e. let's see how much we can put our characters through without them dying. Where the Evil Dead relied a lot on suspense to create a scary, intense environment, Evil Dead 2013 uses violence to create that atmosphere, and that creates two completely different experiences. Despite what Bruce Campbell may say in Q&As, there is a charm to the original Evil Dead. I mean, just take a look at the premises of the original versus the reboot. Original. Five college students going to an old cabin to spend their spring vacation. Reboot. Five young adults go to the cabin to aid a drug addict. While the original premise is a little silly and cliched, which one is more fun? There's a certain innocence to the original that just isn't picked up on in the reboot. Granted, The Evil Dead is before the trilogy got to be ridiculous with screwball comedy, so I wasn't expecting the reboot to be outlandish or hilarious, but there's just something about the tone of the reboot that I can't quite put my finger on. Maybe it's the substitution with innocence for vul vulgar dialogue and sheer gross-out gore. While the original was bloody and gory, it was still a little campy, too, which cancelled it out. If some of the acting was silly or bad in the original, it added to the charm of the classic horror experience. If something is bland or uninteresting in the reboot, it's just modern horror movie bad, which is nowhere near as fun. The climax in Evil Dead 2013 is cool, but nowhere near as intense or memorable as the original. Yeah, the Blood Rain was a neat idea, but compare it to a spectacular display of disgusting stop-motion effects, it doesn't hold up. But Evil Dead 2013 uses a chainsaw in the climax, which was something that the original Evil Dead didn't have. However, the reboot has a bizarre hero switch. Without giving too much away, during the last 10 minutes of the film or so, you're forced to root for someone you probably weren't through the majority of the movie, with the prior hero sacrificed. This doesn't make the climax bad or uninteresting, it's just a little jarring and really weird. Like I said earlier, Evil Dead 2013 is suspenseful due to its brutality, but it is suspenseful nonetheless. It manages to capture the same sporadic and anxious pacing of the original, doing the source material justice. I may came off like I hated the reboot, but in actuality, I didn't. In a world of horror remakes and reboots, Evil Dead 2013 does a great job in paying tribute to the original and keeping things fresh. It's an intense horror movie, but not for the same reasons as the original. And at, ta at times I wish it wasn't quite as gruesome or vulgar, but that's because it's also trying to be its own movie. In the end, Evil Dead 2013 is just pretty good, which is a little disappointing considering that the original trilogy was so fantastic. I don't despise it like a lot of fans do, although I can see why some do. I'll definitely be watching it again, just not as often as I will the original trilogy. I guess I just need a chainsaw hand, a boomstick, and a quote about hailing to the king. Hail to the king, baby. To be satisfied in an Evil Dead movie. 
I give Evil Dead 2013 four box knives out of five, meaning it's relatively groovy. That is my diagnosis, and P.S., watch during the credits. You'll thank me later.